Make no mistake about this. Today's decision has monumental significance. It means that the Affordable Care Act is not just the law of the land, it will remain the law of the land. It is the political phoenix of the Obama administration. No matter how many times opponents seek to erode, minimize, deconstruct, blow up, or eradicate the Affordable Health Care Act, it rises from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue like Dracula seeking to further feed on the American medical scene or a reality show succubus draining the minds of the gullible. Obamacare has survived the Supreme Court again, so where do the foes go from here? She is the former lieutenant governor of the state of New York, now senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, Betsy McCoy. And we're joined by board-certified Atlanta doctor who has not only followed the health care reform debate, but knows it from the working parts out, Dr. Elena George. Ladies, I thank you both for being here. Short time we have. Let's get this all in here. Betsy, I'm going to start with you right now. You wrote a column about this. You've talked about how this hands a victory to the IRS, yes? That's right. This hands a victory to the most hated agency of the federal government, hated and feared. This is the agency that targets conservative groups, stonewalled congressional investigators, lied about where its emails are and then suddenly found them. And it gives the IRS the power to continue to rewrite, revamp, revise Obamacare to suit the administration's political purposes. It's a dangerous increase in executive discretion and, and a terrible attack on the rule of law. Dr. George, from the medical standpoint now, Obamacare has survived four Supreme Court decisions. Is this, again, from that medical chair, a good or a bad thing in your opinion? It, it's a terrible thing. It's a, a day of mourning for doctors, especially independent doctors, because now the, the, the scale is firmly tipped in the, in the direction of corporate interests the hospitals, the medical insurance companies, and patients and doctors are really on the hook for this. There's going to be higher costs out of pocket. There's going to be less choice. There are going to be less doctors practicing medicine. And ultimately, the government will eventually take over the whole thing. Is that what the government is missing here, Dr. George, is that in everything that we've talked about here, all these different ramifications, it is the doctors at the end of the day who are the ones having to pay for this, and the doctors, the ones who have to available, they have to deal out the medical care, but it's making it tougher every day. Absolutely. And basically, it's now considered to be a right and not a service. And when that happens, the government will get to say, what our value is as physicians, how much we can charge, how fast it should take us to get our patients better, what medicines we can use. Forget the art of medicine. It's going by the way of, you know, the, the dodo bird in this situation. And that's a tragedy for patient care. Betsy, from a political standpoint here, there are those saying that now the Republicans can focus on the 2016 election and they can really look to get the Affordable Health Care Act taken care of. Do you well, see well, that then as the, is that the target then? Is that what they've got to focus on now? That's right, they do. But let me start with this. This ruling today is built on a tower of lies. The president's lawyers lied to the Supreme Court, lied by saying there was no distinction in this law between exchanges set up by the state and exchanges set up by the federal government. That was a lie. There was always a distinction. Jonathan Gruber, that loudmouthed MIT economist who wrote a lot of this law, said on tape, just 20 days after the law was passed, subsidies will not be available in the states that don't build exchanges. The Congressional Research Office said it in 2012 in a report to the IRS. It was a lie that the lawyers told the Supreme Court justices, and a lie is behind this ruling. Dr. George, very briefly, 15 seconds, should the patients now around the country be absolutely worried about their health care? Yes, they should. Between HR2 and now this, um, this law that's been upheld, it's, it's a firm attack on patients and doctors. And they're now firmly cost centers. And their health care is going to be based on how much it costs to get them better. And those who are on the end of this are going to find out that it's a, a one-way trip to a hospice at the end of the day. Wow. Betsy, 15 seconds. Is it almost despicable the way some people, in your opinion, the way they're celebrating now? Well, it's despicable because they used every trick in the book to try to win a Supreme Court case when the clear language of the law said they ought to lose it. And that's why Scalia said, Obamacare, you can now call it SCOTUS care. It's just a creation of the Supreme Court. A dark day indeed for a lot of people. Betsy McCoy, Dr. Elena George, thank you so much for joining us. We will talk again soon.